This is Randy Meredith, and I thank you for joining us today. Our interview is Coast to Coast, and we are going to tell you the story about a couple, a husband and wife, who has bicycled from Blaine, Washington, to Key West, Florida, and they will be doing it within 100 days. And uh, welcome to our interview with Cliff Cantrell and Sherry Cantrell. It was, it was your idea. It was my idea because Cliff has gone country, across country four times. We have friends, a friend that's done two trips and other people. So for my 60th birthday, I said I want to go for a cross country ride. Now we're 10 years down the road and we're doing it. So we're clearing off a bucket so, list. So when you were 60, you, you said you wanted to do it and it took yep. 10 years to, to it, pull it, the trigger. It did because we ended up being caregivers for my mom for five years in California. Okay. I've so life got in the way of that and we kind of put it on the back burner for a while. And uh -huh. then once um, she passed away, we said now's the time to do it. So whereabouts in California was your mom at? Right on the central coast, um, San Luis Obispo. Are you familiar with that? Yes, I am. That's uh, uh, near uh, Hearst Castle area. Yes, it is. It and is. it's she was about 20 miles south of that in a little town called Arroyo Grande. Okay. Well, I grew up north of there outside of San Francisco. Oh, okay. Which was the reason why I was asking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I just so, got back from Monterey. And okay. <laughs> he, he just came back from a wedding out there. So it's like uh, California seems to be a central location that everybody knows somebody there or they've been there. So, Cliff, uh, how long have you been riding bikes? Uh, I don't remember ever not riding a bike. Really? Um, now, uh, do you have a three-speed, ten-speed? What do you? Well, use? right now we have a twenty. I have twenty-seven speed. So does Sherry, for that matter. Uh, they're touring ri uh, rigged, so they can carry our luggage, uh, everything we have for the 100 day trip so the we carry on so, our bike. So so you really plan this out, right? Oh, you have to plan it out because otherwise you end up with too many clothes and you don't know where you're gonna stop. So yeah. Cliff put the route together and then after he did that, he went back and started putting in where we're gonna do lodging. We knew about how many miles we were gonna be able to do a day. Uh -huh. Some of that was a little aggressive and we've changed that along yeah. the way on the fly. But that's all of our lodging had been booked before. I we saw had. that, um, uh, and I thought that that was very smart to do, you know, to have some somewhat of a, you know, we how had, far we can we go? For sure. And now, um, uh, have you had any? Obviously, you haven't fallen down or had anything bad happen, um, right? <laughs> you went. I've got a patch right here from oh, a new okay. fall. <laughs> I spoke too soon. They're hiding but, it from me. Um, I don't remember what time down on the golf port someplace. There was sand on the sidewalk and I went across it and it was deep and it literally, literally threw me off the bike. Yeah. So I've got sand burn instead of okay. road burn, right. but no broken bones, no serious injuries, which has been pretty good for the distance we've traveled. Now, um, you don't have anybody escorting you, correct? It's just We're you and your wife. Totally self-supported. Oh, first of all, uh, uh, I didn't even introduce you. This is Cliff. This is Sherry. Hi. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so you're you're totally self-sufficient. If something goes wrong, you're on your own to make the phone calls or to get something going, right? Are, and we have the magic thumb. Yeah. Oh. There, there are a lot of places, particularly out west, where you don't have cell service, so you have to rely on your thumb. That's right. Yeah. There are a lot of dead areas out there. A lot Montana, of dead areas. Wa Wyoming. Sometimes we went three days without cell service. Three days? Yeah. Wow. And, and you're crossing your yeah, fingers, right? You're crossing your fingers. But what we did find out is one day we would cross the Continental Divide, and we were 20 miles from anywhere. We hadn't seen a building. We hadn't seen anything. Uh, and it was getting darker and darker. And then we had one of those 30-second thunder rumbles, and I said, whoa. So we stuck out our thumb, and within three minutes, a woman came by who had a bike rack on the back of her car. She had been uh, promoting a bicycle event. She picked us up. We hadn't any more than gotten our gear in the car. Then it let loose with the hail and the rain. And oh, my God. 
And that's happened two or three times with different sort of things like broken gears or something like that. Never had a problem that we didn't stick out our thumb and within very few minutes, usually the very next car that came by picked us up if it had room. <laughs> Do you have a little repair kit for the bikes, like master links and things like that? Oh, yeah, we carry spare chains, spare brakes. Uh, we have, I have rim brakes, she has uh, disc brakes. So I have a spare disc, I have uh, the basic tools, but... And if you got a flag, you could change change. Oh yeah, I'm, we, uh, yep, I'm pretty good at that now. <laughs> he says eight flats so far, I've had one. You've had eight flats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it that causes the flats? Is it like little burrs, those, those little burrs, or um, uh, pieces of glass, or the biggest garbage? problem we've had is with where tires, uh, truck tires have exploded, and they have that real annealed wire, and um, and those little wires will cut through. We run. We have Kevlar lined tires, but. The, those little wires will pop through and... I wouldn't have even thought of that. Uh, we um, didn't either. Glass? Glass, yeah. yeah. I, I popped mine on a, on a rock. You popped yours on a rock. It was a sharp rock and it was just enough to make it go flat. Now, tell me, tell me one of your most interesting stories of somebody that you met along the way. Ah, <laughs> that's easy. Uh, her name was Judy. Uh, she was 81 years old uh, and was our host, uh, Warm Showers host in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. Uh, she had been one of the original bike centennial riders uh, that really started the cross-country movement back in 76 uh, and had been... If, this was sort of a life-changing thing for her, and now her, uh, she still bicycles. When we left Cape Girardeau, this 81-year-old woman brings her bike up out of the basement and says she's going to lead us out of town. Well, she, we were going 35 miles. We had a short day that day. She went 17 and a half of it and left us, so we had 17 and a half to go that way, and she had 17 and a half. Half we ended up doing the same amount of mileage. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty amazing woman. Uh, speaking of age, do you mind uh, sharing with everybody what your age is? I turned 70 in January, and Cliff is 79. Did you people hear that? 70 and 79. And and th this trip uh, is going to be a combined mileage of, it's over 5,000 miles, Just right? 5,000 miles, yeah. 5,000 miles. Mm -hmm. D is the trip going easier or harder than you thought? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, at times, it's been harder than I thought it would be. And other times, it's like, where did the time go? You know, we in the very beginning, we went across Snoqualmie Pass, and there was a lot of what people refer to as hike-a-bike because it was so steep, you had to just get off your bike and push it up the hill. But it was one of the most incredible parts of the ride just because you're up the treetops it's an old rails to trails if you're familiar with the rails to trails term so they take old railroad beds and turn them into bike paths so the grade is where trains could go you know because they can't go real steep so it makes for a nice bike ride mm -hmm. but at times it would get steep up there but you're at the treetops you're going through the old trestles we went through a two-mile tunnel and that and the sunflowers in South Dakota will probably be my two takeaway memories because we went through thousands and thousands of acres for three days of sunflowers in blossom. Wow. How about you, Cliff? Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty much the same. Uh, I've gone over those mountains before, and there was a real question at 79 of how that was going to go. And then uh, Sherry had knee surgery in May. So she lost the month of May. We pretty much lost that month for training. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was really some bit real questions when we started. Uh, but we persevered, 
and now we do grades that we, we couldn't have thought of doing mm -hmm. at the beginning of the ride. Is, um, is this totally self-funded or do you have some help from people or how, how is this all pulled together for you? Uh, we have a handful of people who have contributed to the cause, but it is otherwise self-funded. Okay. And um, uh, wh what are you, if you was to talk to somebody who's younger and thinking about maybe doing this, what, what, what would be your message of self-encouragement to them? That's, there's so many, but uh, the big ones are doing a trip like this gives you a real understanding of your ability to solve problems. Uh, you, 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 across the country, you look at the map and say, I did that. It's, uh, Plus, you get to see the country at what we call the speed of bike. Uh, the, when we went, through, went past miles and miles and miles of the sunflowers in South Dakota, mm -hmm. uh, you know, past 8,000 acre sunflower farms, uh, you get to go at, that, at a speed that you can enjoy that. Of course, when you go past a feedlot or a dairy farm, you experience that too. <laughs> Iowa's nice for their pig farms. <laughs> it's, you just can't hold your breath long enough. I would add, though, someone, when we talk to the kids, kids 20, 30 years old, um, don't try and do it by yourself. It's a daunting, daunting task. Uh, people do that, but you really need a cheerleader for when you feel down, you can't. I had a couple of days, I just want to throw my bike down and say, I'm done. And we'd get to talking and yeah, so you bounce off. we bounce off each other. And I admire the people who can do it by themselves, but, yeah. but I would highly encourage well, also those for safety. For safety. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and well, we, and we had one advantage two days before we took off, I got us some intercom helmets. Uh, they're just like the ones some motorcyclists use, but they're light enough for bicycles. Uh -huh. And they last 14 hours on a charge. So we were in constant communication for safety. And, and, uh, just, and just for companionship. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, we probably talked more yeah. in a general day than would normally happen <laughs> but, uh, because our we were focused together right. but uh, the helmets had a half a mile range so uh, we didn't have to run wheel to wheel and if one of us had a flat or something like that and was in back you said, hey I got trouble stop <laughs> now who's the photographer between the two of you because I'm sure you've taken some photos I'm probably more the photographer than Cliff, okay. but he's taken some amazing pictures as well. But I think mine outnumber his. Uh -huh. So do you, do you plan on writing about this or doing a little journal or um, do, just even for yourself? Probably we will. We intended to blog the trip, but um, it, it was really hard. It was a lot more work than we thought it was going to be. And when you get off the bike at the end of the day, the last thing you want to do is sit in front of a computer. So we'll catch up with that when we get back. We'll blog um, some of that. I don't see a book in our future. A lot of people think we should write a book, but I think we'll just be sharing a lot of our pictures and our stories as we uh -huh. go down the road. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but along that same line, what we didn't budget for was social time. And that plays such an important part in the trip. Uh, you, talk, you stop, you talk to people, you uh, are involved in people, and that took away from time to blog. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll try to, we're gonna to try to catch that up, and uh, we carry a book of our road angels, that's the people that uh, help us along the way. We had a woman stop and say, 
you need some cold water. I have a gallon of cold water in the car. And she filled up our water jugs. Or somebody else, uh, we were struggling up a hill. And guy comes up behind us. and He had passed us going the opposite direction. And, and it had taken him a long time to get back to us. He said, you folks are in hot and tired. Oh, it was over 100 degrees. And uh, he said, I'll take you up to the top of the hill. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. yeah it, uh, but then we found out he lived on the other side of the hill, so we just stayed in the truck with him and rode down the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, uh, that helped. <laughs> well, um, I want to thank you two very much for inviting me into your home that, that you're staying here at uh, Navarre. And uh, thank you for sharing your experience with our viewers. It's uh, quite inspiring, it, it, to say the least. It's our pleasure. We love telling our story. Yeah. I would say anybody that has the physical capability of doing it should do this. It, you know, as someone told Sherry, it's not a 100-day trip. It's a 101-day trips. And if you look at it that way, it, it is truly amazing way to see this country and to think, to say, oh, I really can do that. Well, uh, we hope that Cliff and Sherry has inspired you guys to get out and do your thing in life. This is Randy Meredith reporting for Navarre Newspaper. Thank you, Randy.